Amen, amen and amen. You know, when a man be in Christ, one of the things that is required of you is that God demands that ye be separated. He says, come out from amongst them. And that's why I want to encourage every young Christian here, you cannot be with God and also dabble with the world. My experience as a young Christian was that God indeed made the demand of me to come out from my old circle of friends. And what he did was he placed me in a new circle of friends. And I began to know the value of true friendship. Covenant in nature. It is in this context I want to introduce our guest minister today. In that as a young Christian, our paths crossed right from university and then then in university i was still playing he was already very serious with his faith amen but then as i became a christian and i got my first job outside lagos our paths crossed and we virtually lived together we lived in the same complex went to the same church and fellowships. He was an older Christian and like an older brother holding my hands. And we continued in Lagos. And he's been so consistent and so true. He's very passionate about youths. And so he has a ministry called Youth Disciples International. Oh, sorry, Young Disciples International. YDI. I'm sorry, some of you have heard of YDI. One of his uh, sons in the faith is our popular Eben. Eben is a product of YDI. He's also the senior pastor. Yes, let's give the Lord a round of applause. He's also the senior pastor of Great House Mandate in Lagos. But more importantly, he's my brother and my friend. I want us to give a warm promised land welcome as I introduce to Minister the Word, Pastor Joe Jessimel Ogbe. Praise the Lord. Where is uh, Femi? Femi, come first. Come, 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 come. Say you say I'm your elder brother. Praise the Lord. This guy is a true man of God. He's a complete man of God. Why do I say so? We met in Kaduna, and the very first time I saw him in Full Gospel Business, Businessmen's Fellowship, Doba Hotel. Oh, you have told him. I said, what are you doing here? It was a shock. Because when we are in the university, he was part of the guys from Lagos intimidating us in the north. Oh, yes. He's got charisma when we are in university, but no character. <laughs> But you know something When Jesus came in He got character I bear witness that he's got the two You know something Character is superior to charisma But when you are fortunate to have the two You go places this guy is going to go places. <laughs> Amen. He's going to go places. And the lovely wife too, that took us all the way, 1992, to Niger State. There's something that love can do. Love can make you travel anywhere. <laughs> Praise the Lord. My wife is not here. You may be seated. Thank you very much. My wife is not here. Lovely wife. I love her passionately. Amen. 5th of May this year will be exactly 30 years in marriage. 
Amen. I remember how we, the university got closed down. You know, University of Jaws closed down those days. We started our courtship in the university, 1986. And there was a crisis. And um, they closed down the university. I was in the north, and she was coming down to Lagos. I followed her to the airport to pick, uh, I mean, to take a flight down to Lagos. I stayed, you know, those days of Nigerian Airways. There, there was a delay. The aircraft came late, around 7, 8, thereabout. I was still waiting for her. Love can go to any extent. After I waited for her, she took a flight. There was no vehicle to take me back to the city of Jos. And you know how far the airport is from the town. Even to trek from the airport down to the road that would take you, no, it, it was a difficult thing. And you know something? I trekked joyfully. <laughs> oh yes. Praise the Lord. I trekked joyfully. God is a good God. God is a good God. She's not here, but I have um, the chairman of uh, oh, our, our board, uh, Dickens board, Dickness Isibo, stand up. Put your hands together. Very, very committed servant of the Lord. She's part of the people holding my hands in the work of the ministry. And my honorable PA, stand up, let them see you. God bless you. And the others that are working, that are not here now, the Lord bless all of you for coming with me. In the name of Jesus Christ. I want to say to you this morning that I am sent here. Yes. Pastor Femi and I were friends. But I'm not here on the basis of friendship. Because I didn't lobby him. I didn't talk to him and say, please. I've invited you to come and preach in our own ministry. It's now your turn to invite me. There was nothing like that. It was a function of the involvement or the instruction of the Holy Spirit. Yesterday I was in an, another church. God used me powerfully. And I'm here again this morning. I'm a saint servant of God. I didn't send myself. And when you are saint of the Lord, you have the backings of the Lord. I know that because of my coming this morning and because he sent me, there are people that the Lord has ordained, designated for total deliverance. In the name of Jesus Christ. And that's why the Lord gave me the title of this message. The prayer answering God. I love prayers because I have experienced the efficacy of prayers. I have seen what prayers has done in my life as a Christian. For your information, I gave my life to Christ at the age of 17. And that was one of the reasons, or that is one of the reasons, because I'm still a partaker of the ministry of young people. I love young people. Because I, like I tell people, if, I've not, if I had not met with Jesus at the age of 17, it would have been a very difficult life for me and for people. Jesus makes all the difference in the lives of every person, particularly the life of a young person. I've written several books for young people. The current one is Building an Effective Youth Ministry, which I dedicated to the DG because I was invited to preach at Excel. A papa family excel. Is this part of a papa family? Oh, oh, sorry, sorry, sorry. <laughs> ah, I know now, I know. Sorry. You are the foundational members of a papa family. In 2008, and I was asked to speak on building your church. And that book is like a compendium of all that I have put together for that conference. It's blessing people today. Another one is 
uh, what do you call it? The youth God uses. There are several of them. And I know that so many young people in this church will be blessed by it in the name of Jesus. Let us pray. Father, in the name of Jesus Christ, I thank you for the privilege to be here. You're the one who sent me here. I did not send myself. And I pray that you bless every soul in the mighty name of Jesus Christ. The prayer answering God is the topic of the message that we have today. Jeremiah 33 and verse 3. Call unto me and I will answer thee. And show thee great and mighty things which thou knowest not. Call unto me. It's an invitation to prayers. The almighty God is calling your, on you to call on him. He's inviting you to call on him. Call unto me and I will answer thee. God is a faithful God. If he promises to do something, he will do it. He's not a man that should lie. He's not a man that will deceive you. God does not deceive any man. His nature is anti-deception. His nature is anti-deception. He cannot lie. God cannot deceive any man. So if God tells you, call unto me and I will answer you, be rest assured that God will answer you. The Bible tells us that God is not a respecter of persons. Acts of the Apostles chapter 10 verse 34 to 35. Peter opened his mouth and said of a truth. I perceive that God is not a respecter of persons. But in every nation he that feareth him and walketh righteousness is accepted with him. Romans chapter 10 and verse 12 to 13. Romans 10, 12 to 13. For there is no difference between the Jew and the Greek. For the same Lord over all is rich unto all that call upon him. For whosoever shall call upon the name of the Lord shall be saved. God is not a respecter of persons. So if I kneel down to pray to God. And God hears me. And you too, you kneel down to call upon God. God will hear you. You know why? He's not a respecter of persons. But why some people are calling on God, others are not calling on God. Did you hear the testimony of that beloved sister that prayed in the midnight? Did you see how God changed her condition? God remains a changer of destinies, a changer of stories. If God has not changed your story yet, it's because you have been lazy to call upon him or you have not known what to do. Because there is what to do. The Bible says the labor of the foolish will yet them all because they do not know how to go to the city. If you don't know how to go to the city of healing, you will be stranded health-wise. If you don't know how to go to the city, as, long, as, as far as prosperity is concerned, you will be stranded in the journey of prosperity. If you don't know how to go to the city, as far as success is concerned, you will be stranded in your journey or your quest towards obtaining success. Knowledge is key. Knowledge is key. Go for knowledge. Go for knowledge. You know something? Prayer and knowledge go pari pasu. Don't just pray for praying sick. It must be based on knowledge. A couple of years ago, a beloved daughter of Zion, at age 35, she was not married. So her friend in asked her to see me for counseling as a youth minister. So she came to see me 
for counseling. She said, she came for prayers. I said, no, I'm not praying for you yet. First of all, go for knowledge. I didn't pray for her that day. I wanted her to get knowledge. She got home after she listened to my message connecting miracle relationship. She was angry with me. Told her younger sister that she was staying in her house. I went to pray. I went, I went to Pastor Joe to pray for me. He didn't pray for me. He said, I should go and get knowledge. Gave me his message to listen to. I'm not going. In the night to show you the faithfulness of God and the extreme love of God. She had a revelation. She saw me ministering to her. So she woke up, told her younger sister, see the dream I had. He said, the sister said, you better go to Pastor Joe. God has ordained that that man will be used of God to bless you. So she came and apologized. I'm sorry, blah, 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 I'm sorry. I said, you know what? If you pray according to the will of God, God will hear you. I wanted you to locate the will of God for your marital destiny. It's not about, it, it, it's not about my friends are all married. God is not a God of sentiment. He's a God of his word. If God were to be a God of sentiment, no child would have died during the flood of Noah. What did he know? What did the child know? So why will he die with others? Sodom and Gomorrah. Children die because God is not a God of, of sentiment. Prophet Elisha calls 42 children. They all perished. God was not in heaven to stop God's servant. Say, look, I didn't send you to kill these children. But God is the God of his word. The moment you open your mouth and cause, God say, it's sealed. God is not a God of sentiment. He's a God of his law. The word of God is law. I wanted you to locate the word of God concerning your marital destiny. That was why I gave you that message to listen to. Now that you have listened to it, you now know why you want, God wants you to be settled maritally. Because God couldn't have created you a woman and not have a husband for you. There is a husband for you. I ministered to her. I gave her 14 days. I said, within 14 days, your husband will manifest. And that was what happened. Under seven days, the brother that she eventually got married to, both of them had served in Nigeria before he emigrated to the Republic of Ireland, a pharmacist. He was making arrangements to get married over there. But he was not too comfortable. While I, at the time that I was praying for Bola, her name is Bola, the, at the time I was praying for Bola in my office, that was why he was saying, oh, this girl, maybe she don't marry now. This one, that one. She now called. I mean, he now called. Bola, how are you? Blah, 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 blah. Are you married now? There used to be that brother that both of you were going out those days. I hope you are now married. How about children? He said, for where? That brother has gone to marry somebody else. I'm still single, Lord, believing God. He said, please don't believe God. I'm the one. I'm the one. I'm the one. I'm the one. Today, he flew down from Republic of Ireland. They're married. They have two lovely sons. God is not a respecter of persons. I want you to present God's word to him. Don't present your tears. Present his word. This is what the word says. I don't know how many lawyers we have here. How many lawyers? If you're a lawyer here, raise your hand. Beautiful. God bless you, lawyers. Have you ever gone to court pleading on the basis of sentiment or on the basis of cases? Do you know why the Supreme Court, the Supreme Court of Nigeria, all the seven justices decided that Hope Uzodima should come 
instead of the other one, the PDP guy. Do you know? It's on the basis of evidence, law of evidence. It's not a matter of man, no man. You and I that are no lawyers, we can say it's because they don't like uh, um, PDP. It's because they don't like this one. It's because they don't like that one. That is sentiment. What they deal with is evidence, proofs, legal facts. God, the word of the Lord says, come let us reason together. You don't reason with God with tears. You reason with God with facts of the scriptures. This is what your word says. 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 says. In light of what the word of God has said, I stand in faith that you will do it. That's it. Do you know as you're seated here like this, if you know the right word, tomorrow your case is changed. Because God is still in the business of changing status, changing stories, changing the states of people. Let's look at a man called Jabez. Jabez was a man that teamed up with God. For the change of story. I pray that you will have a change of story. In the name of Jesus. First Chronicles chapter 10. I mean chapter 4 verse 10. First Chronicles 4.10. First Chronicles 4.10. And Jabez called on the God of Israel saying... Oh, that thou wouldest bless me indeed and enlarge my coast and that thy hand might be with me and that thou wouldest keep me from evil that it may not grieve me. And God granted him that which he requested. That which he requested. God changed the status of Jabez on the basis of of prayers. So you know what? So if you want change of story, you want enlargement, you want preservation, all you have to do is to carry this scripture and present it before God. Oh God of Jabez, I know you are still alive. Prove to me that you are not a respecter of persons. You that change Jabez's life. You that change Jabez's story. You that change Jabez's Life. Change my life also. Let me tell you. Over any issue that bothers you. If you have five scriptures. Or seven scriptures. That matter is settled. Are you hearing what I'm saying? On the altar of prayer. Any issue bothering you. You are going to meet with God that answers prayers. Locate five powerful scriptures. Locate seven powerful scriptures and present them before God. That issue is settled because God honors his word. God honors his word. May the Lord who change Jabez's life change yours also. Are you here this morning in need of change of status? Receive it. I say receive it. Receive it. You have dwelled upon that mountain for too long. It's time for you to make progress. Our God is a God of progress. The Bible says the part of the just is like the shining light. It shines more and more and more and more onto perfect day. God's plans and purpose for you is progress. So when you are not experiencing progress, it's not a design of God. It's a design of the devil. You must go forward. I say you must go forward. 
You must go forward. You must go forward. In your family life, go forward. In your business, go forward. In your academics, go forward. God is happy when you go forward. As a parent, as a father, anytime I receive phone calls from my children and say they are doing well, they are making progress, I'm always happy. Except you're a sadist, you're a devil reincarnate. Not to be happy at the testimonies of your children who are making progress. You are happy. You want to introduce that your successful son to all your friends. Oh, see my son, he actually graduated with 2-1. Oh, this is my son, just graduated first class. You know, no, no, just, 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 no, just, You feel cool, right? Don't you feel cool? God wants to feel cool about you. God was feeling cool about Job, not knowing that he was going to put Job inside trouble. He was feeling cool, was bragging about Job. Bragging about Job. And God, <laughs> Satan had told God, you think Job is doing that? Just like that? It's just because uh, you are there for him. Remove your hand, let's see now. He said, yeah, okay. I'll remove my hand for a while. But make sure don't kill him. He went and terrorized, Satan went and terrorized Job. Terrorized Job. You know the story very well because you're Bible scholars. Job did not give up. Job did not give up. You know why? Because Job was not serving God because of things. There are so many of us that are serving God because of his blessings. And I want to say that those people are God users. If it is happening well with you, you go, oh, why not? God is good. God is good. But God will always try us. He will always try us. God tried me. When my wife and I got married, 5th of May 1990, University of Lagos, Chapel of Light. I never knew God was going to try us for nearly five years or more than five years. Five years. 1990, my son came in 1995. Five years. No child, nothing. And meanwhile, I was the youth minister, children pastor in Winners Chapel, Lagos. From 1989, I've been in charge of the children's church. Youth pastors, I mean youth pastor, pastoring young people. People call me Father Abraham. Because children follow me in droves. Follow me. Pastor Joe, Pastor Joe, Pastor Joe. Hey, Pastor Joe. What's up, Pastor Joe? Hey, hi, guy. Pastor Joe, Pastor Joe, Pastor Joe. But there was no child to show. No biological, biological child. But I had spiritual sons and daughters. That was a trial. Let's watch our mouth. Because I remember 1986 when I asked Enreta out. The name of my wife is Enreta. When I asked her out, 1986, she said something. He said, now that I'm saying, eh, I love you, I love you, I love you. If we marry and we don't have children, will you leave me? 86. I said, I will not leave you. I will still be there for you. I'm marrying you for companionship, not for children. Damn. <laughs> for companionship. So I went ahead. <laughs> and I, I said, if, 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 we will go on missions. I said, if we don't have children, we'll go on, as missionaries, we'll go serving God. He said, are you sure? I said, I'm so, I'm just so sure. When we got married, first year, nothing. Second year, nothing. 
Fourth year, nothing. Fifth, nearly fifth. If you want to hear the whole story, my book, Getting, I mean, what's the title of that? Getting What You Want by Faith. That was when I engaged faith as I never did before. I asked her, buy a shirt and put in my wardrobe. I put the shirt there. Anytime I want to dress up to go to work, I say, son, when are you coming to wear your dress? It was a traumatizing moment for my wife, particularly. God was blessing us. To the point that one of my aunties, who was a witch, told my mother, your son will be very rich, but he will not have children. I'm telling you. The truth was that God, family, you can bear witness, God blessed us. Money was there, but there was no child. I remember when we were Building our duplex. One of the pastors came to pray during the construction. The prayer was, oh God, this room so, they must be occupied by children because they knew our case in church. <laughs> Doctors had told us that we will not have children. Blocked tubes. My wife had blocked tubes. Fallopian tubes were blocked. Fibro went to one of the doctors and the doctor said, oh my shame, after examining my wife, oh, except this thing is removed, you cannot have a child. To what's in the case, he looked at me, also did my own examination. He said, oh, oh my shame, low sperm count. Oh my shame, low sperm count. Precarious condition. Hallelujah. Precarious condition. God must try you. But after you pass the test, he will show himself mighty. Today, God has blessed us with three powerful sons. You have started again. You have started again. You have started again. You have started again. He has been pleading with me to go for more so that I can have a... A girl. Uh, I won't tell them. Yes. Praise the Lord. This God that we serve is a good God. I don't know about you. I know that God that I serve is a prayer answering God. I don't know whether you know the story of Abraham's servant called Eliezer. God answered his prayer. Let's look at that scripture very quickly. Genesis 24. Genesis 24, verse 12 to 15. Genesis 24. Genesis 24, verse 12 to 15. And he said, O Lord God of my master Abraham, I pray thee, send me good speed this day and show kindness unto my master Abraham. Behold, I stand here by the well of water and the daughters of the men of the city come out to draw water and let it, and let it come to pass that the damsel to whom I shall say, let down thy pitcher. I pray thee that I may drink and she shall say, drink, and I will give thy calmest drink also. Let the same be she thou hast appointed for thy servant Isaac. And thereby shall I know that thou hast showed kindness unto my master. And it came to pass that before he had done speaking, kaya ya ya ya. Before he had done speaking, that means he was still praying. That behold, Rebekah came out. 
who was born of Betuel, son of Maelka, the wife of Nahor, Abraham's brother, with her pitcher upon her shoulder. Do you need speed this year? In the execution of your projects this year, do you need speed? Is that project, is it of God? If it is of God, the God who answered Eliezer with speed will do the same thing for you. I say my God will give you speed. He will give you speed. He will give you speed. In the name of Jesus. In the name of Jesus. He will give you speed. He will accomplish that project for you. And he will say, oh, is it me? Is it me? It's you. What makes the difference in the life of an individual is the God factor for a child of God. It is the God factor. You are not an unbeliever. If you were an unbeliever, it's a different case. You cannot use the standards of the world to judge yourself. You are a child of the, of the living God. You are a child of the living God. You belong to the covenant. We do things according to the world, not according to the world. The people of the world, they have their ways of doing things. Are you hearing me this morning? They have their ways of doing things. They can scheme, but you can't scheme. So you must believe God. You must do it the way God wants you to do it. If you want to prosper, beloved, Usher, you want to prosper this year? There is a way for you to prosper much more. Don't tell me you have arrived. Nobody has arrived. If Bill Gates is still looking for money, if Mike Adenuga is still looking for money, Dangote is still looking for money, and you, you have chicken fee, just one billion. Nobody feel rest for your side. You carry shoulder like this. Oh my God, I was almost To talk out is a problem. How much you get? One billion. That is one billion that other people are dashing people. Are you hearing what I'm saying? The earlier you reduce your shoulder, the better. Pull it down, pull it down, pull it down, pull. Should I preach it? Lovely people. I just like your hairstyle, man. Ooh, it's cool, it's cool, it's cool. Please forgive me. You know I'm a youth minister. So I don't, I'm not a gentle preacher, you know. You know so, so, so stay in one place. And, and I'm, so, 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 so. If you're a youth minister, you must be youthful. Do you understand what I'm saying? You know? Bring down your shoulder. Bring down your shoulder. Because God is a lifter of the humble, not the, of the proud. There is nothing God hates like pride. Go and ask the devil and God. They will tell you. What the devil wanted to get through the instrumentality of pride, Jesus got it on the instrumentality of humility. Go and read Ephesians chapter, no, no, not Ephesians, Philippians chapter 2. One, desire to be like God. I want to be like God, you know. I want to be like God. I want to be like God. He was not, Satan was not created in the image or in the likeness of God. He does not have equality with God. But in the case of Jesus Christ, Jesus Christ had equality with God. But he counted it not robbery to be equal with God. He humbled himself. And when he humbled himself, God said, I've not seen this. I will give you a name that is even superior to my name, God. 
Oh, am I speaking heresy? That's not a heresy. The name Jesus is superior to God. When you are dreaming in the night and some demons are chasing you, just say, God, 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 they will hold you more. But say, Jesus, say, Jesus, they will scatter, they will scatter, they will scatter, they will run away, they will run away, they will run away. The name of Jesus is superior. Satan would have gotten it, but he used the wrong strategy or the wrong key. Beloved, the key of pride will never take you anywhere. God's servant, Bishop David Oedipo, is my father in the Lord. He said he asked God, what is the secret of my father in the Lord, Pastor E. Adeboye? He said, God told him that his secret is humility. Yes, it's prayer. But do you know that some people pray in, in pride? When some people are loaded by this one, Lango Brolo Shogedaleva, Ye Calarado Shogelia Cada, Ilo Rodo Shangeliaba, Yala Rodo Shogelia, Lancha de Liam Gasusi, Ila Radusha. The tongue that they didn't tongue at home. Are you hearing what I'm saying? The tongue that they didn't tongue at home. When there are so many people, Langaraba Jujilia, Elarudu Sukusilia, Makite Luruduzu, Magada, Elarudu Zulia Kala, Elere Makwaya, Makwaya, Eluruduzu Kaluka Salia, Eleri Mazaga, Elarudu Zukalia, Baka Salia. Speak that tongue from your home before you come to church. Am I speaking? Am I speaking? I love this church because it's a free place that I move around. Yeah, man. Hallelujah. It's a lovely church. It's a beautiful. Man, you guys are beautiful. You're lovely people. In the name of Jesus. Prayer is a major key in the kingdom. I don't know whether you have issues with your brother or with your wife or with a colleague, but with prayers, you can get it done. I saw someone called Jacob in the Bible. He prayed a prayer that settled the cup flint between him and his brother Esau. In Genesis 32 and verse 11, the Bible says, Deliver me. That's David, I mean, um, Jacob praying. Deliver me, I pray thee, from the hand of my brother, from the hand of Esau, for I fear him. Lest he will come and smite me and the mother with the children. Let's look at 30. Three of Genesis, 33 of Genesis, Genesis 33, verse 10 to 11. And Jacob said, Nay, I pray thee, if now I have found grace in thy sight, then receive my present at thy hand, for therefore I have seen thy face, as though I had seen the face of God. And thou wast pleased with me. Take, I pray thee, my blessing that is brought unto thee. Because God had dealt graciously with me. And because I have enough. And he urged him and he took it. When Jacob prayed unto the Lord, the Lord gave unto him an idea to present an offering or to present a gift unto his brother. You want to resolve a conflict? Engage in prayer first. Don't do macho. Don't do macho. You have issues with your colleague. You have issues with your boss in the office. Don't do macho. Don't call friends that you know 
Oh, I've got contacts here. Oh, I have got I, I, the other person in our office. I know him. That one, I know this one. I know that one. You will fail. First of all, go before God in prayers. Lord, I have issue with this boss. I don't know how to handle him. I have issue with my wife. I don't know how to handle it. I have issue with my husband. I don't know how to handle it. I have issue even with my children. I don't know how to handle it. God, show me the way. Give me the strategy. And God will give you the strategy. If you are very, very obedient to carry out his strategy, you will have success. I decree upon you deliverance. The God who delivered Jacob from his brother. That same God would deliver you from that your enemy. Will deliver you from that enemy. Will deliver you from that enemy. Will deliver you from that enemy. In the name of Jesus. In closing. Are you in any form of affliction? Are you in any form of distress? The God who answered David when he called on him in distress, that same God is alive and well. The Bible tells us, Jesus, the same yesterday, today, and forever. Jesus is not dead. He's alive. He's interceding on your behalf. David said in Psalm 118 and verse 5, Psalm 118 verse 5, I called upon the Lord in distress. The Lord answered me and set me in a large place. God cannot bring you from Egypt and abandon you in the wilderness. There is a promised land. And you are in the promised church, promised land. If you are a member of this church, truly, this parish, Oasis, right? If you are a member of this church and you have not, not arrived at your colorful promised land, check your life. Because by divine orchestration, by divine orchestration, by divine naming, this place is promised land and you must arrive at your promised land. There is power in names, so. When we in secondary school, there was this young man, we're all giving ourselves, you know, names, you know. And then he came up. He said, you know what? I'm son of darkness. I'm son of darkness. And when you say son of darkness, say, yeah, this is me. Son of darkness. To cut the long story short, he died a mysterious death. Abigail said concerning the husband, Nabal is his name. And foolishness is with him. Because the meaning of Nabal is foolishness. He behaved foolishly according to the name. Your church name is promised land. I prophesy upon you right now. Arrive at your promised land. The job that you are doing now, that's not your promised land. God has a better job for you. He has a better place for you. In the name of Jesus. The career that you are pursuing, that is not your limit. You can be the best in that career. You can be the best. You can be the best in that profession. Everybody will know, will know that you have obtained the power of God, the, the empowerment of God, the grace of God, the favor of God, and you are arriving at your promised land. In the name of Jesus. You will not stop your journey in the wilderness. You will not stop your journey in the wilderness. You will not stop your journey in the wilderness. You will arrive at the promised land.
I want to pray for three sets of people. Very quickly, I have five minutes more to go. As a youth minister, I have the grace to cause singles to marry. Yes. I just shared the testimony of Bolatito with you. If you are here as a single, you want to marry this year. 2020 is my year of marriage. Run out. Run out quickly. You want to marry this year, not next year. If your faith cannot carry you, sit back. My faith is already moved. I want to pray for people who would like to be married this year. This year. This year. First of all, let me tell you that I love you. Are you aware of that? I love you. And God loves you more. God wants you to be settled. God wants you to be settled. God wants you to be joyfully married. Raise your right hand now. Raise your right hand. Say with me, Father. Father. I receive grace to be married this year. By your power, by your grace, by your favor, I receive grace to be married this year in the name of Jesus. As you have declared it from your mouth, so shall it be. I agree with you in faith that this year is your year of wedding. Your wedding. Go and set the date of your marriage, of your wedding. I tell you, I give you a guarantee that the God who did it for Bola Tito will do it for you in the name of Jesus. If the man or the person God has ordained for you has not emerged, I give you 21 days. 21 days! The God that I serve, the prayer answering God, let this same God visit you so that you will know and know that God is real and that God loves you. Congratulations. Go ahead. You can go now. God bless you. Congratulations. Congratulations. Look at yourself in the mirror in the morning and say congratulations. People will congratulate me this year. People will congratulate me this year for my wedding. For my wedding. People will congratulate me this year. People will congratulate me this year. In the name of Jesus Christ. In the mighty name of Jesus. You are here. You want to carry your children like I carried. Step out. The God that answered me will answer you. The God who visited me will visit you. God is a God that loves all of us equally. Every medical report must be jettisoned. When my wife got pregnant, we didn't know that she even got pregnant. So, no menses. No menses. So, we said, ah, let us go to the lab and check her. So she went to the lab and they got the report. They said, ah, you are not pregnant. So my wife started praying. I used to see menses. Now I don't see menses again. What a condition. Oh God, bring back my menses. <laughs> bring back my menses. Praise the Lord. And I had promised her from home that I was taking her out for an outing. I said, the moment they confirm you pregnant, we are going to Susu place to eat out. So I was driving her. We got there rejoicing, rejoicing. When they gave us the report, oh, she cried in the car. She cried. And I was singing to her, whose report will you believe? I shall believe the report of the Lord. I said, I will still thank you then. We are still going to go and eat and shame the devil. We went out to eat. Hallelujah. God is not far from you. He's closer to you than you can ever imagine. He knows your condition. 
Raise your hand as you are going to carry your children. As you are going to carry your children, imagine your child in your hands now. Can you imagine your child in your hand? You nursing your child, kissing your child, hugging your child. Father, 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 you did it for me. Do it for these ones also. Prove to them that you are the one that gave me those three sons. Let them carry their own children. Let them carry their own children. In the name of Jesus. In the name of Jesus. In the name of Jesus. Mysterious conception. Mysterious conception. Miraculous conception. It is done already for you. In the name of Jesus. In the name of Jesus. Carry your baby. You can go now. Carry your baby. Amen. Carry your baby. Amen. Carry your baby. Amen. Carry your baby. 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 Carry your babies. 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 In the name of Jesus. Hallelujah. The last but not the least. I believe in instant miracle of healing. You are sick come out your sick come out now 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 that sickness will no longer harass you do you know something health is superior to healing health is superior to healing as you're coming out your healing is guaranteed wherever the thing is paining you your leg your head, wherever, touch it as a point of contact. Father, in the name of Jesus. I stand as your servant and I decree, I declare, Total healing for your children in the name of Jesus. Whatever pain that brought you to church this morning, you are not taking it back. You are not taking that pain back. You are made whole. Total healing is your portion. Receive your healing. Receive your healing. Receive your healing. Receive your healing. In the mighty name of Jesus. You shake your body, shake your body. Every pain is gone off you. In the mighty name of Jesus. That sickness will not return. The Bible says affliction shall not rise up the second time. That shall be your portion. In the mighty name of Jesus. You can go back totally healed. Totally healed. Rejoice in the Lord. The Lord has done it. The Lord has done it. The Lord has done it. I say the Lord has done it. The Lord has done it for you. Your healing is guaranteed. The next service you will have terrific testimonies of healing. By this time next Sunday you will give terrific testimonies. Pastor Joe prayed for me and the healing has been achieved. And that healing is permanent. That healing is permanent. Maybe you are in the church this morning. Somebody invited you or you're not sure of your salvation. I can never forget what Daddy Gio said several years ago. Do you see a man that is married and will not know the date of his marriage? Do you know a woman? Do you see a, have you seen any woman that is married? And you ask her, are you married? He said, I don't know. It's not possible. The date is real. In the sense or in the mind of the people. I can never forget whether I remove this ring or not. I can never forget 5th of May, 1990. 
I can never forget. You know why? It was a conscious decision that I took to marry my wife. I was not forced. It was not assumed. You don't assume salvation. Salvation is a real decision that you take. I took my own 1979, I mean 1978 rather. I can never forget. It's a date, it's a time that I will never forget because it was a conscious decision, a deliberate, a conscientious decision that I made to follow Jesus Christ. If you're not sure of your salvation, come out now. I'll pray for you quickly. Anybody, come out. Come out. Wherever you are, just come out now. Or you're here, you're not sure. If the trumpet of God sounds now, the trumpet of God sounds now, you're not sure of your salvation. Just come out and I'll pray with you. I'm waiting, I'm waiting, I'm waiting. Anybody? You're not sure of salvation. You're not sure if the trumpet of God sounds now. The trumpet of God sounds now. You are not sure that you will make rapture. You are not sure that you will make rapture. Come out now. Come out quickly. Don't look at any friend. Don't look at anybody. Because salvation is a personal decision. Salvation is a personal decision. Salvation is a personal decision. I went to a secondary school to minister. And I asked the young people. I said, how many of you are sure that you're born again? And one of them raised his hand. I said, why? How do you know you're born again? He said, because my father is a pastor and my mother is a dickness. I said, that's why you know. He said, yes, that's how he knows that he's born again. But you and I know that that's not true. I spoke to him and he had enlightenment. He had knowledge and he gave his life to Christ. It's not because you are attending promised land. It's not because you are in redeem. It's because you have surrendered your life personally to Christ. What's today's date, young people? 20 what? Go and write it in your diary or your Bible. It's the date that you consciously, deliberately gave your life to Christ. Raise your right hand. Pray this prayer after me. Say, Lord Jesus, I'm so sorry for all my sins. Father God, forgive me. Today, I give you my life. I surrender unto you completely. Jesus, come inside me and be the Lord of my life. Thank you, Father, for accepting me as your child. Amen. I pray for you now. Father, in the name of Jesus, I pray for these ones that have surrendered to you today. Keep them by your word. Keep them by your love. None of them shall be left behind. In the mighty name of Jesus Christ. Thank you for doing so, Lord. In Jesus' mighty name. Amen. Please, can you see the ministers? They will pass an information to you. See. Put your hands together. Rejoice. Rejoice. Hallelujah. Amen. Problem Solving Skills for Teenagers is one of my latest books that I brought and I want everybody who loves teenagers, loves teenagers, you have teenagers, please pick a copy. Present it to him or her as a gift. Do you understand what I'm saying? There are other books at the bookshelf or at the bookstand there. You will be, you'll be greatly blessed by it. Do you understand? If your teenager is giving you trouble, just give him or her that book. Is enough. Relax. And then afterwards, say, come, let the book that I gave to you the other day, let's discuss it. That's all. Hallelujah. I release the blessing upon you in the name of Jesus. Your children will not stress you. You will not mourn over any of your children. Your children will bless you beyond measure. They will satisfy you in, their, in your old age. They will not abandon you in the name of Jesus Christ. I bless this church. I decree outstanding growth in the name of Jesus. I see mega auditorium in this place in the mighty name of Jesus. This place will be too small for you. Will be too small for you. 
in Jesus mighty name may the Lord bless your pastor and his wife and the entire family in the name of Jesus may the Lord bless the pastorate in the mighty name of Jesus thank you faithful father in Jesus precious name once again I appreciate you for giving me the platform to be a blessing thank you We hope you found God through his word in this message. God is not done with you yet. If you'd like to know more about him or have questions arising from the message you've heard or any other inquiry you'd like to make, please call us on telephone numbers 0802 0803-344-1592, 0903-31-68. 847-0803-715-3366. You can also send an email to rccg.promiseland.org. Follow us on Twitter at RCCG Promised Land. At the Promised Land of the Redeemed Christian Church of God, our hearts and arms are wide open to receive you. Welcome. God bless you.